Howdy, Ken. Hi, how are you? Ken, the early riser in the Midwest. <laughs> it's only nine on the East Coast right now. So what is it, like eight there or something? It's eight, yep. Eight. Well, that's good, man. Get up early, start working on the label. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, um, absolutely. I wanted to talk to you about the history of your label because I know you got started. I think you first were in Seattle and then you moved to Portland. Is that correct that you started in the Pacific Northwest? Yep. It started in uh, Seattle and uh, our first release came out in January of 2000. So um, wow. right at the turn of the millennium. millennium. Uh, and uh, yeah, and it actually, I've been using the name Dirtnet for a couple of years before that as a internet radio show. Right. And then it kind of, it sort of evolved from, uh, you know, the internet radio show. And then I started trying to sell, you know, some of the records that I played a lot on the show. So for it was, you know, a little mail order thing uh, before it was a, a label. And then it just kind of grew into that sort of felt pretty natural at the time. You you have a history working with distribution companies or labels before you started your own label, right? Uh, yeah, that's true. Um you know, as far back as I can remember, well, at least into the early 90s, I was would help out, you know, volunteer and help out friends, small labels around Wisconsin. And then um, in, uh, I believe it was 96, I uh, moved back to Wisconsin from Seattle uh, to work for a small uh, label slash distro called Rhetoric Records. Okay. And um, that was like my, like my first, you know, music business. Oh, so you're from the Midwest and you moved to the West Coast. Exactly. Okay. Um, I, was, I, I grew up here in Wisconsin. So. Yeah, I was trying to figure out yeah. how that whole thing worked out. Um, I was working for labels back in the 90s too, 80s and 90s mostly. So, I mean, the time things have really changed. And that was one of the thing, yeah. things I wanted to talk to you. I'll get that in a minute. But what were some of the early signings and releases that you had on Dirt Nap? Well, uh, when I first started, when I very first started Dirt Nap, I kind of pictured it as sort of an outgrowth uh, of my radio show, which was playing kind of obscure, you know, garagey punk from all over the world. And uh, my original idea was it was going to be like an international label that primarily did seven inches. And um, it seems like that only, that didn't really last very long, only, you know, five or six releases uh, until... You know, I felt like at that time, Seattle and, you know, the Pacific Northwest in general was just like exploding with oh uh, yeah bands. And it, it didn't seem like, you know, a lot of the record labels around were really jumping on them. Um, so I think at, at one point I sort of made a more conscious decision to start focusing on the local thing, um, which made a lot of sense because at that time, you know, I was 22 years younger than I am now. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I was pretty much out at shows, you know, every night, more or less. Um, so it just felt like kind of a natural you know, pivot or whatever. But what made you eventually move back to the Midwest? Did you just get tired of the West Coast? Did you get homesick or? Yeah, I wanted to try something different. Um, you know, I ran a record store there for a long time and uh, I sold that. And, um, you know, I was having some other life changes. You know, I got a divorce and uh, all of a sudden I felt, found myself with a lot less responsibility and no particular reason why I had to live in the what, uh, what was the, the record what was the record store you ran it was that in, in milwaukee no it was in portland it was called green noise records oh in portland oregon yeah okay so okay so i thought okay i got confused there so you didn't have a record store in milwaukee it was in no milwaukee. no got it but it's the, the 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 store is actually still around as a um online mail order and um the new the the current owner hopes to reopen it as a brick and mortar store in a couple of years uh, in the meantime, they do all, they, they still do all our mail order. That's great. For us. So I, I, you know, I, I don't own Green Noise Records anymore, but I still work with them really closely, like every day. Yeah, I'm happy to see that a lot of record stores are, are, are making a comeback and there's more and more everywhere I go now. I seem to find vinyl, you know, which is fantastic because I'm a vinyl junkie myself, you know, mm -hmm. Um uh, when you move, um, like you have a ton of great bands, I mean, so do you think it, you you were just had your 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 pulse on what was going on in the street and that's how you found these bands or the bands that are coming to you or how did that all work out for you? Uh, a little bit of both. You know, I, um, I was pretty fortunate in that, you know, some of the very earliest bands that we started putting out full lengths were, uh, were really committed to touring a lot. 
And so I you know, had several bands kind of crisscrossing the country at any given moment, you know, spreading the word about, about Dirt Nap. <laughs> um, and I think that that was really instrumental in, you know, a lot of the bands that wound up on Dirt Nap came as a result of other bands sort of recommending them or like introducing me uh, to them. Um, you know, probably one of the more well-known bands on Dirt Nap was the Marked Men. And right. pretty much just, you know, bands started coming home from tour and saying like, wow, I played, we played with the greatest band in, you know, Dallas on this tour, the Marked Men, you gotta like check them out. Um, and uh, it's funny, I actually, a little bit off subject, but I actually passed on their first record and wow. really, really, really regretted it. Uh, once I actually got a copy of the record that came out on ripoff a little bit later. And um, I remember when they sent me the demo for the second record, I don't even remember if I listened to it before I got on the phone, you know, I called the phone number that was written on the CDR and uh, you know, I'm almost, you know, 20 years later, I'm still working with those guys quite regularly. So that's fantastic. Do you get very involved with the making of the records? Or do you let the bands have their own creative freedom and just bring you the final project? Oh no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm super duper hands off on that stuff. Uh, I'm not a musician myself. So, you know, I feel like I don't really have, you know, a lot of input as far as, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not the artist, uh, you know, I don't really, that's not really my job. It's not really my decision. Um, sometimes, you know, occasionally if I really feel super strongly about something, I'll, you know, chime in with my two cents, but, you know, in the, at the end of the day, it's always the band's decision on everything as far as, from the recording to the cover art and everything else. Yeah, that's a good attitude. I've always had the same attitude when I work with bands too. You know, I know a lot of major labels have all this, you know, the hands-on was over the top at times and a lot of records got made and never got released because the A&R yeah. guy didn't like it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm happy to hear that you're giving them, is the same with the artwork and everything? They just Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I have people, you know, very occasionally I get a band who just doesn't really have, you know, a vision for the cover art. And in, in those cases, I have somebody, you know, who can help with that um, if the band's like, you know, get stuck or whatever. Uh, but 99% of the time, you know, most most punk bands are pretty self-contained. Yeah. Know, they don't really need a lot of, you know, hand-holding or whatever. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to, to step back and let that be the, you know, the artist's job. That's a great, great, yeah. I agree 100% with that. So I wanted to talk about some of your bands with you. Uh, you know, I had the Scrunchies on my show and you know, I found out about them from college radio and I'm sure you have a pretty good college radio base out there because their record actually went all the way to number one up here in Boston at WMBR. So I saw that, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I, I had heard, knew about the band from Stunner and the, with the song Wichita, but I when I heard this record, Oh, it just blew me away. I mean, I had Laura and uh, Danny on the show and they were great. And I think Feral Coast is one of my favorite albums right now. I think when they added Matt Castori to the lineup, yeah. it just brought this powerful. How did you find them and how did they end up on your label? Uh, you know, it's not, not, not a very interesting story, I'm afraid. They sent me a demo and, uh, of, well, they sent me basically Feral Coast and I absolutely flipped out. Um, I'd actually seen them before, uh, in Milwaukee, right when I first moved here and, um, you know, I'd seen, uh, Laura, well, you know, one of Laura's other bands, uh, Kitten Forever. Yeah, they're awesome. So they were, you know, they were kind of on my radar a little bit already, but I wasn't really prepared for, uh, you know, how much Feral Coast was going to blow me away when I listened to it. Uh, plus, you know, I'd also been, you know, laying pretty low for the couple of years prior uh, with Pandemic. COVID and just, you know, life changes and stuff. Like I hadn't really been up to much for a couple of years, which is pretty uncharacteristic for me. Um, so I'd been kind of around the time I received that, you know, that submission, I had been kind of like sort of casting around a little bit going like, okay, you know, I've taken a couple of years just chilling out. Maybe it's time to get back to it, you know? So I, I feel like that and that and that ERG ZP were sort of, uh, sort of my reintroduction to doing the label. Yeah, when I first, I mean, absolute, absolute maximum was the first song I heard, and it just, just hits you so hard in the face. I can understand if I was at a label and they and a band like that sent me their tape, I'd want to sign them right away too <laughs> because that was just. So I mean, they're getting ready to do some dates, and I know they're going to play your big show, which we'll talk about in a mm -hmm. minute. 
Um, do you encourage bands to like get in their van and get out there? I mean, are all your bands pretty much like that or you have to push some bands out in the road? Well, you know, I mean, I, I definitely, you know, with bands that are willing and able to tour, I mean, that's definitely a selling point as far as putting out their record. I mean, I don't force anybody to do anything. Um, you know, obviously I prefer bands that are going to get out on the road and tour. I feel like, I definitely feel like, you know, given, despite everything that's changed in like, you know, the music world, I, I still strongly feel that that's, you know, the best promotion uh, that can I can possibly imagine is bands you know, sort of getting out of their hometown and playing their music in front of people live, you know, I, I, I just don't think that there's anything else that really compares to that. Um, you know, with that said, you know, I feel like, you know, I've, you know, obviously aged over the 22 years I've been doing this. And so have a lot of the artists that I've been working with, you know, we're all, you know, we've all gotten older and it's, you know, it's kind of hard to tell a dude in his forties that he should go, you know, live in a van with five other guys. Yeah, go sleep on someone's floor months, for a you know? few weeks. <laughs> So, you know, it's like I said, it's not, uh, it's definitely not like a, a requirement that bands tour, but uh, it's, it is a selling point and, you know, it does make, uh, it, it, you know, it, it does make me feel a little bit better about, you know, investing a ton of time and money into a band if I know they're going to be, you know, out on the road promoting things on their end, you know. I know the Scrunchies want to go out because they were like talking about that and I'm hoping that they make it out to the East Coast because they're already popular out here. So it would be a good move for them. Um, mm. I just picked some random bands out here. So I hope you don't mind. Uh, no. Fox Face, okay. I know that record came out in January 2021 and the man, but what a great record, man. I well, love did you that. Hear their, did you hear their first one? We put out another one by them too. Yeah, before that, before, oh yeah, yeah, they're a good band. Yeah. Man. So they're like a Milwaukee band. So you, yeah, uh, they're actually the only local Milwaukee band on Dirt Nap, although we've done a lot of Milwaukee bands in the past, like before I lived here. Uh, you know, over the years, Milwaukee's always been, you know, kind of a hot spot for a lot of our bands, I feel like. Uh, but you know, yeah, Fox Face is the only only local one right now. So um I was in Milwaukee the last time I was there. I used to tour with bands when I worked at, at AM Records, and I was there uh, in '94. It's been a while. Mainstream Records, I remember the Mainstream Records chain. You know, like those guys helped us out a lot back then. So I used to visit all their stores. Those guys were cool. Milwaukee was a really cool town. You know, Madison too. You know, and I I'm know from, I'm actually I'm actually from Madison. Yeah. Oh, you're from? Yeah, that's like. Yeah great town you know and um so it's good that you have a local band on your label that's cool you know yeah i mean i definitely like to do more but i actually met fox face um when i was still on the west coast they they came out to the west coast and stopped into my record store and uh introduced themselves and uh, i remember it was kind of funny because the the power was out at the store that day like there was no electricity <laughs> like when they were in there people were like shopping by flashlight <laughs> dedicated record shoppers man um the ergs you know they've been around since 2000 i i it's their first recordings that you're you just put out in like six years i think and i've been a fan of that band for a while they've always been to me kind of like one of those poppy punk bands really catchy songs i'm so happy that you got new music from them that cover that they do is a hoot of the zombies that kind of surprised me a little bit but yes, they've definitely. always been they've done covers before they did hey jealousy they did blue by nirvana in the past they've been known mm -hmm. to do that so it wasn't that big of a surprise if you've known mikey for a long time is that how you got involved with them mm -hmm. yeah i i had uh, i i knew Mikey, I believe even before the ERG started, um, you know, he played in drums in a band called uh, Dirt Bike Annie, who was uh, a band I was super duper excited about when they were around. And I, I was fortunate enough to get to put out their second and, and final record. Oh, you worked with Mikey before? I did. Yeah. Oh, that's uh -huh. cool. I did yep. not know yeah. that. Yeah. He seems to still have that same energy and songwriting ability, man. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> um. Another band I found that I liked and I knew a little bit about was Proud Parents. Uh, mm -hmm. I know you put At Home with in 2021. I watched some videos of them and stuff. What do you what, what's happening with those guys? Are they still together? Are they going to oh, tour? Yeah, or? yeah I, I just saw them like a month ago. Um, 
Yeah, they're still around. Um, in fact, they they you know they they put out a second record on their own uh, during the pandemic, and I felt bad about not being able to put it out because I think it's great. But uh, you know, at the time, I was just too things were too uncertain, really, with everything, with the whole sort of infrastructure of the label being affected by the pandemic. I just didn't want to commit to you know putting out anything that I didn't absolutely have to. Um, so I you know I I felt really bad about not putting that record out but I just I just wasn't able to but I'm glad that they're you know they they put it out themselves in cassette it seems like it's you know pretty been pretty well received which is good because it's a fantastic record I haven't heard that one but in home with I really liked a lot that's a good one um I'll have to check out check out that other record though definitely there's so many bands man the, the, one really... I out is, is the self-titled one yeah 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 um one other band I wanted to mention was personality cult uh Ben Carr they're like a mm, North yeah. Carolina band. Uh, another fascinating band with great songs. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm completely in love with that record. Uh, I definitely think it's a personal, you know, favorite of mine as far as Dirt Nap releases from the past, you know, five or six years. Um, yeah, I remember uh, Jeff Burke from Radioactivity and Marked Men and, and uh, Lost Balloons was recording that in New York where he lives. And um yeah, he kind of just tipped me off to it and just said, hey, like, I'm recording this band. I think you'd be, you know, pretty stoked on them. And uh, yeah, sure enough, I mean, I, I pretty much called them right away and said, hey, do you want to put out a record? And um, luckily they were into it. And I definitely hope we do more stuff with them in the future. I, I think that is the plan. I know a lot of people refer to your label as a punk label, but you've got more kind of indie rock bands and like, you know, more accessible stuff on the label. <laughs> But it's yeah. nothing wrong with having the punk, you know, I, I used to run this label called Giant Records in the in the 80s, you know, and everyone called us a punk label. But, you know, we had some other releases on there that weren't as punk. So I can understand how you fall into that that category. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about what you got going on this coming weekend, because it's really looks like it's going to be a, a, a total blast, man. You've got the. Um, you got 20 bands playing at the High Noon Saloon in Madison, mm -hmm. big college town. I know everyone likes to say that. Uh, some of the bands I mentioned are playing, Scrunchies, Ergs, Marked Men, Low Culture. It's a Friday and Saturday thing. And then the Saturday show, wow, that's going to look like quite a day. It starts at 3 o'clock. Why don't you give us the whole rundown of how you put that together and what your expectations are for it? Well, uh, you know, I should probably start off by saying that originally this was a 20 year anniversary show. So it was scheduled yeah, for June since of, 22. Yeah. Yeah. June of, of 2020. And then I think we were when the pan pandemic thing first hit, I think we were a, bit, a little too optimistic uh, because we were we, we rescheduled it for October of 2020. And obviously, <laughs> you know, obviously that didn't happen either. Um, and, you know, so much had happened, you know, in the the time that elapsed between the original when the original one was supposed to happen and then this one that you know when it first came time to like really look at putting the line you know putting together a 2022 show I was you know to be honest I was a little bit like man it was just such a bummer to have to cancel the last time I was like I don't know if I really want to go through all this again just to like have it not happen and so I, I really had to do some serious you know soul searching to you know figure out if I was really up to going through all that again because it was a hell of a lot of work you know yeah um but I'm glad I did uh you know luckily most of the bands um from the original lineup were able to you know recommit to this one a few weren't but um also some of the bands that that couldn't make it to 2020 uh could make it to 2022 like the ergs uh they weren't they weren't on the original um wow. on that the original worked show. out pretty good for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, it was kind of a bummer in that I lost some of the, a couple of bands that I really wanted. And, but then I also picked up some too. So I guess it kind of balanced out. Um, you know, I was also worried, um, you know, the 2020, there, excuse me, the 2020 show sold out pretty quickly. And, um, you know, but fast forward two years and I was kind of worried that people were going to, you know, if people were ready to travel or, you know, whatever. Um, so I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't a thousand percent sure that there was still going to be interest for the 2022 show, but luckily there, luckily there were, uh, or there is, um, both, both shows are sold out. So, 
Did um, they have to like reimburse everyone all for all those yeah. tickets and then start all over again? It, yes, exactly. Luckily, I you know I didn't have anything to do with the ticketing, so um, I didn't have to do that personally. But yeah, the, the venue did, um, which is obviously a huge bummer. So you're going to set up a big, huge merch uh, section at your show and try and sell all the stuff on the a label that day, that those two days? No, not really. Um, like, first of all, I want to I want to keep the merch focus on the bands because, you know, That's with cool. 20 bands, it's like, you know, we're not really in a, a financial position where we're able to fly 20 bands in. Uh, so, you know, you know, the bands are definitely kind of going, you know, above and beyond as far as I'm concerned, uh, as far as playing this show. So there's going to be some like t-shirts and you know tote bags and stuff or dirt nap but like for the most part like we're not going to be selling any records i want the bands to be able to do that um but uh yeah i mean if you're definitely if you're looking for some some dirt nap stuff there there will be some floating around oh yeah i'm sure all the bands i know that the scrunchies record is like the backup at the plant they were telling me that they're crazy it's so it's so hard right now it's feels like there's a lot of that you have a lot of records that are backed up like that right now. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely a few. I feel like the Scrunchies record was probably the most affected. Um, but yeah, it's really like like once I saw, like when, once the sort of production process on the Scrunchies record started, and I saw how long it was going to take, um, I sort of intentionally pivoted away from full lengths. Um, and uh, like seven inches are going a lot faster. So I have a few of those in the works. Um, and then um, a, like the next two uh, Dirt Nap full lengths are split releases with European labels. So I'm kind of experimenting with having them pressed over there. Nice. Um, which is, it's a little bit, fa- it's, it's, it's a little bit faster. I mean, it's really expensive, obviously, to press stuff over there and then have it shipped all the way to the U S and I mean, it's still pretty, it still takes a long time. So I don't, I, I definitely don't think that's an ideal solution, but uh, you know, in, in this, in the cases of this upcoming things, it's um, you know, it kind of makes sense because a European label is putting it out over there. So it, it sort of makes a little more sense to, you know, get them pressed over there, just get them pressed once as opposed to doing a U.S. pressing and a European pressing. What's your uh, distribution set up as far as, things going now do you have different distributors in the u.s and in in europe well i mean technically revolver is our exclusive distributor worldwide and then they have you know various companies that they partner with over there uh like you know kind of sub distribution uh so yeah technically technically revolver does all of our wholesale sales and then um you know green noise does all of our you know retail sales like whenever anybody orders something off the Dirt Nap website is actually shipping from Green Noise uh, in Portland, not Dirt Nap. Wow, that's an interesting setup you have. It's yeah, great. I mean, I've had that really almost since day one of the label. I mean, that's really one of the things that sort of enabled, you know, the label to kind of run at the level that it does in that, you know, I'm not necessarily the one, you know, warehousing and, and boxing up and shipping and, you know, doing all the sales and, you know, collecting all the money and all that stuff. Um if that were the case, uh, I probably wouldn't be able to, to really do it, um, you know, without, you know, sort of the help of, you know, various, I mean, there've been many distributors over the years, but, you know, that's, that's really helped me a lot. And Are you doing that. the radio and publicity for the label yourself? Uh, no, um, I've got a guy, uh, Chris Nett in um, Pennsylvania. Oh yeah, uh, he's oh yeah, of course. That's uh, how I got, media. He, he I, does all the I'm press on his for, mailing list. Yeah, <laughs> okay, <Duh>. yeah. <laughs> we, we've we, I've been working with him for, I think he's done like the last like eighty dirt nap releases or something. Wow. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he puts together really good concise emails. I like I like his emails. Oh, cool. All the cool. info that you need there. Because uh, that's how I found out about the new Scrunchies record, actually, from him. Oh, cool. Because cool. I got his message. Um, so the soul, the shows are sold out this weekend. And mm-hmm. um, I mean, is, how's Madison doing these days? I know for a little, Wisconsin's had their share of problems during the, the last couple of years with the pandemic and, and the incidents that have happened there, unfortunately. I sure. mean, have things kind of calmed down a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it seems it seems like it. It's kind of hard to tell because, you know, I spent two years, you know, sitting around my apartment. Um, <laughs> uh, but 
But, uh, you know, I, I think so. I mean, it's definitely a, an interesting time to live here. Um, I can't really speak for Madison because I actually live about 75 miles away in Milwaukee. Um, so it's, you know, it's real close, but. Um, well, it doesn't I, seem like those two towns are that far apart because I know it's, 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 it's no, it's really not. It's barely, barely an hour. So, um, I mean, it's, it's, you know, practically the same metropolitan area, but uh, yeah, I kind of, I kind of just wanted, I lived in Madison for about a year and a half when I first got back to the Midwest. And um, I, uh, I don't know. I kind of felt like I like a little bit bigger of a city might be might be in order. So I sort of moved to Milwaukee kind of spur of the moment. You know, I've moved a lot, too. I've lived in New York, L.A., Boston, Phoenix. You know, I know, I, hmm. I know you know, you get bored sometimes. You got to keep moving, man. You know, I mean, some people, yeah. do. I know I do. So once now you got this big show coming, it's going to be such a great lineup and everything. What are your plans for the future and your, your goals and plans for what you want to do down the road? Do you have uh, a large number of releases? You're going to keep it small. I mean, what is your future plan for the label? Um, we're probably going to keep it small. Um, you know, there was a point um, when I was living in Portland where I was doing like, you know, 10, 12 releases a year. And I think I'm just kind of beyond that as far as, you know, energy levels and you know budgets and stuff um it's probably going to stay pretty small um but with that said i have no intention of of stopping um That's again cool. with you know i kind of feel like you know it's been so difficult trying to get records out in the last year that um you know i've got you know a fair amount of records in the works right now and then after that i'm going to need to like reassess and maybe do something a little different um, if it's still like impossible to get records pressed. I, you know, I just feel like something's kind of got to change with that and I need to sort of find a, a solution, but. Is Bandcamp working well for you? Oh yeah, yeah, Bandcamp's great. Um, you know, we we do, you know, digitally we do pretty well uh, overall, you, I would say. You got some business from me yesterday because I downloaded yeah, I saw that. some Thank of your you. songs <laughs> <laughs> for my show. I don't mind helping labels out at all. I've worked for labels my whole <laughs> life, so I know what it's like, dude. So, yeah. Um, so, anyways, we have, like, you know, we definitely have some cool stuff in the works, though. We have a uh, new band we just signed up to Dirt Nap called uh, More Kicks, like a oh, yeah. garage power pop band from London. Um, That's a big actually, signing for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to meet those guys for the first time next week. Exciting. Um, and um, so we're doing a seven inch and album by them. And then we're doing a seven inch and album uh, by Martha, another UK yep. band. They've been on the label for a while now. Um, and so, yeah, that'll be, that'll be most of, that should be the rest of um, the rest of uh, 2022. And then for early 23, we got some, a couple of different EPs in the works. Um, I probably shouldn't get too specific, but one is a split record by a Milwaukee band. And then, um, we're, I think we're going to be doing some stuff with uh, Mark from Mark Men and Mind Spiders. He's actually got a couple new bands that have like really great recordings. Like one is a solo thing and the other is like a, you know, band band. And uh, I think we're going to try a couple EPs with those. And uh, again, I'll probably like kind of shy away from full links a little bit until I can sort of get something, from, something figured out as far as, you know, ability to press full links without it taking like a year. You know, because I just feel like that's that's pretty unsustainable, you know. I'm just gonna ask you a couple more things, Ken. You're sure. you're a good guy, man. Thanks for doing this. Um do you listen to a lot of other music or you like I know when I worked for labels and I managed bands, I got so engulfed in my own stuff that I other things I had blinders on. Are you the same way? Or are you spending a lot of time listening? And where do you listen or do you listen to records? I mean, what's your whole vibe as far as that goes? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like I go through periods where, um, you know, I'm kind of more and less, you know, up on checking out like new music. Uh, lately, it's been a little more. And, I, you know, I kind of I feel like it's, you know, it's a little bit of everything, really. You know, I listen to vinyl at home. I listen to CDs in the car. Uh, I listen to streaming everywhere else. Where, um, where, what's your go to as far as streaming goes? Oh, I use Spotify. And Bandcamp. I know we hate to admit it, but we have yeah. to use Spotify. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I mean, I think from a customer perspective, Spotify is great. Um, it is. It is. Yeah. I wish their uh, politics you know, were different, but you know, yeah, what can exactly, you do? Exactly. 
Because bands um, should be getting paid a lot more money than yeah. they are. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Although, you know, I will say that, you know, I mean, Spotify, I mean, I hate to say this too, but it's probably like the biggest single source of our revenue right now. Really? Wow. Which is, you know, unfortunate, but, you know, that's kind of where things are at. That's interesting. That's interesting mm -hmm. to know, man, for sure. I'm sure Bandcamp's getting up there too, you know, because I, I like Bandcamp personally for newer bands. You know, it's great mm -hmm. for indie oh, yeah. bands, you know absolutely well um good luck to you man yeah and thanks good luck i to hope you. The, i hope this weekend turns into a real huge event for you i think it will i wish i was there just to see the scrunchies and the ergs i mean i love both of those bands so yeah it's gonna it's gonna be great and you know a lot of these bands for a lot of these bands it's their first show in years yeah um and you know some of the bands like the scrunchies and more kicks and Boy, I think there's got to be at least a couple others like I haven't met yet. Like, you know, a lot of the newer the newer bands. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's going to be really fun. Um, you know, of course I'm, you know, just been a big ball of stress, you know, kind of <laughs> yeah, I can imagine you know, know the details of it. It seems like as always with these things, a lot of last minute things have popped up. So, um, you know, right now it's kind of kind of got me pulling my hair out a bit, but I think that, you know, once I get there it's going to be awesome. Well, have fun, man. And thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Yeah, thanks so much. It was great to meet you. All right, Ken. You take right, care, man. man. Yeah, take it easy. Bye-bye.